this tweet came in and it's from Steve Harvey, right? Steve Harvey made this um, quite banana statement. I think Mel knew Steve Harvey's show. I'm not sure if it's new, if it's a new tweet, if it's something that is old, whatever it may be, but let me get it up and we'll, we can talk about it. Da, 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 da. Let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. Where is it? Where am I looking for? Yeah, cool. There we go. So notes here, right? So here, rich people don't sleep, according to Steve Harvey. Do, 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 do. Show this on here. My computer is very slow today. There we go. Finally done. Rich people don't sleep eight hours a day, according to Steve Harvey. Sleep v wealth, right? We're going to break this down a little bit in this video, and we're going to analyze what he's talking about and see if there's any sense to these nonsensical statements from. Um, He's sort of like a faux televangelist, isn't it, really? Isn't it? In a weird way, isn't it? Would you say that? He kind of mothers, maybe because of the way he looks, but he's sort of like in the, that, that kind of way of speaking, that pattern, um, bombastic stuff, um, everything's about absolutes, there is no middle ground, that sort of stuff, right? That thing he did with um, Monique has always rubbed me up the wrong way, sitting down on national TV with your friend and airing out your dirty grievance, your grievances in front of the public to watch is a bit weird. Um, it's very hot 97-ish. Um, you know, putting your friends on blast to get views. Like, I'm not really a fan of that. But again, everyone's got their way of doing things. So Steve Harvey on his show, um, it's a little segment, it's 30 seconds. We can't read too much into it because there, be, there might be a larger context to this. But the internet went in a bit of a firestorm. I kind of released some tweets kind of um, uh, fighting against what he's saying, but also kind of, you know, breaking it down into what it, what he's basically talking about in general to his audience, I'd assume for the most part. Let's watch a little bit of that. Let's talk in front of me and you can hear what I'm talking a bit. Zoom in a bit here. Boom. People don't sleep eight hours a day. That's a third of your life. Then for 24 hours in a day. You cannot be sleep eight hours a day. You can't live in LA and wake up at eight o'clock in the morning. It's 11 o'clock on the East Coast. The stock market's been open two hours. They're already making decisions about your life and your ass will sleep. The Bible says he who loves to sleep. What's that about breaches stuff? I didn't even know he was going to say the Bible, so I forgot. I even... And the folding of hands, poverty will set upon you like a thief in the night. And again, that quote's taken out of context, isn't it? Because you know what that quote actually means and it? it's about letting life pass you by as opposed to not sleeping i'm pretty sure jesus wasn't a fucking uh self-help guru back in the day right jesus wasn't fucking the first tony robbins out there like this is nuts <laughs> how can you take a scripture out of context like that i'm not even a flipping i don't even go to church anymore right and i know that scripture doesn't mean you shouldn't be sleeping it means don't let life pass you by don't sit idly by whilst opportunities are passing you by go out there and go get it Right, Jesus Christ, motherfuckers. Anyway, Steve Harvey says what he says. He's got his, he's, he's got a right to his opinion. And again, I think you can take it in twofold. You can say number one, I'd say categorically he's wrong. I don't think sleeping is any kind of indicator or any kind doesn't it doesn't yeah sleeping is has no indic sleeping uh, sleeping is no indicator of how susceptible or how likely you are to attain wealth or success. But then again, it's up to you what you want to determine as wealth and success, right? So if wealth is the name of the game, then potentially what he's saying is correct, right? Because that's what the, there's a little sub, someone put an overlay text over there. I'm not sure if it's, it's actually what he said, but he's, he's, he spoke about the stock market. So let's imagine he's talking about money. If he's talking about generating money, like numbers, right? You want to be Warren Buffett. You want to you wanna be Bill Gates. You want to be Mark Zuckerberg. You want to be Kevin Systrom. You want to be these people that generate money, right? I'm not sure if Kevin Systrom can count the Instagram guy. I'm not sure if he set out to just become a billionaire. Or a million, I'm not sure. Again, maybe Mark Zuckerberg is a pretty, a pretty good example. Maybe Kevin Spiegel from Snapchat maybe is a better example. Maybe PD is a better example. Um, those kind of people that set out to, you know, they come from a, they come from a dark, bad place, and you, the primary goal is to kind of get out there in the world and make as much money as you can, so you never have to go back to where you came from, right? Money, 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 because they see money as like the security blanket that's going to make sure all the things that happened to them in the in the past, whether it was a power going off, whether it was a lack of money, uh, the lack of actually good sleeping um, arrangements, whatever it may be, they won't want to go back there again. Now, if that's true and he's talking about wealth and money alone, then there is maybe some truth to what he's saying because he's talking about stock markets. He's talking about, you know, uh, being up at the crack of dawn so you can conduct your businesses from the West Coast and the East Coast, different time zones. There might be some validity in what he's saying, right? Because you're going to have to be on, especially if you're investing, I'd imagine so. I'd get out having invested in the stock market. There might be an occasion where you need to be on call 
available all the time to kind of get that done but i'm assuming nowadays if you've got the money and the means there are probably brokers that you could use who could do that work for you whilst you sleep you don't necessarily need to be awake to do that yourself but again if you're starting up you don't have that much income then maybe you might have to do all this stuff yourself and really put your nose to the ground now again this is only for the one percent of the one percent of the one percent right not every no one in this not many people in the world there's a reason why there's only a certain number of billionaires and it isn't because of the patriarchy don't believe that nonsense right it's not because of that it's because to attain that level of wealth the work that's needed is something that only a small amount of people are willing to do or can do let's say can do and willing to do is both in the conclusion right i don't necessarily think most of it there might be a percentage of let's say in the percentage of um reason why there might be a certain percentage that you can attribute to systemic um to systemic oppression to patriarchy in some way shape or form that probably does exist but i say for the most part the precondition of a person to wake up at 5 a.m every morning to sit on his computer invest in stocks that no one's heard of to worry about this sort of stuff in his lunch break to be reading investment magazines to on a commute to work reading that stuff on the way back doing that again when he comes home from 7 to 1 a.m then wake up again at 6 a.m to do that day in day out day in day out with a family just doing your regular shit in life day in day out seeing no real discernible um, results no real um actionable things I oh look i'm really good at this it's not coming yet it's not coming not coming in boom all of a sudden it comes and you become you know one of the richest men in the world and i think that level of suffering i mean only a certain number of people can do it in the same way you know these 100 mile races that you see people doing now supposedly they're they're thinking about doing 500 mile races i heard in joe rogan podcast like yeah and then they want to do it maybe 750, 750 miles of running right and that's and i said that right people are trying to run 750 miles Right. There is something there is a there is a mental makeup of that person that not everyone has. There is your wires are a bit your wires are your wires are put together differently than other people. That's something that you just can't deny. I'm sorry. There's nothing there's no amount of um there's no amount of even in a playing field that's going to make the regular person around the corner want to do that. Or even if that imagine that's not even the case. Imagine if it, imagine if it was the case that there was a lot of money in marathon running, right? And like there was a lot of money in that kind of 500 mile races, there still wouldn't be that many people doing it. If if imagine first place got you a million dollars every single time, there wouldn't be that many people signing up. Because again, it takes a certain person to want to do the training, to sign up, to commit to it, to put the deposit, wherever it may be, to fly to that place where you have to go train. It's a certain person that does that, to tape your feet up and keep running. There's a You have to be a little bit mentally... Same with wealth. I think there's, you know... We've all seen it with people like Jeff's up, Jeff Jeff Bezos, sorry. Do you know, like he's worth more than anyone in the world today, and he's still driving. He's still going forward. He's still he's trying to take um he's trying to um, launch uh rocket ships and stuff, right? Spaceships. He's trying to go into the he's trying to he's trying to land on the moon. So these guys just have there's something else about them wired. Now that's wealth, by the way. When it comes to success or when it comes to maybe achieving your dreams, that's different, right? I don't think wealth and success in that way are, diff are different, are the same because success in that way could be you being a sneakerhead and having the opportunity to um, make your living reviewing trainers on YouTube. It, won't, it might not necessarily generate you millions and millions of dollars, but it will allow you a lifestyle where you do everything at home, you don't have to go to a workplace, you get given shoes by certain companies to review, you've got adoring fans, you give back to the community that made so much to you that it's very fulfilling, right? It might not be as much money as somebody working in a marketing department of a sneaker company, but for you, you'd much rather be making your own content under your own rules, in your own house, in your own studio, with your friends, promoting things you love than working for a brand that you don't love but take home $100,000 a year instead of taking home $50,000 on YouTube and doing the thing you love. And you hear that stuff said a lot about someone like Gary Vee, right? He's always talking about those kind of things. So I think you have to split the both of those things. And I think one thing you probably can't have that much sleep. You have to be, you have to acknowledge that if you want to be Mark Zuckerberg, you have to be, if you want to be the best of all time, if you want to be go down in history as one of the people that really shook up the world, that left their imprint on society, that contributed to, to the furtherment of the political conversation, to humanity in general. If you want to go down in flipping history, I'm sorry, but you can't sleep eight hours a day. It's just like, no one's done it so far. No one's been able to, um, no one that we know of goes to Coachella, um, attends all the gigs, goes out, drinks, does drugs, plays football on the weekends, goes goes on dates on Tinder, and still runs a billion dollar company. It doesn't exist, right? It doesn't really exist. Or is trying to get a billion, run a billion dollar company. That's not a thing that ha exists at the moment. We don't have any examples of it. So for now, what we can ascertain 
is that if you want to be the best of all time, you have to sacrifice sleep and sac- and not only sleep. You have to sacrifice going out, sacrifice family, sacrifice friends to get to where you need to get to. Imagine the amount of birthday parties, anniversaries, funerals um, you have to miss. Just imagine. Not including all the stuff with your partner, Valentine's and relationship uh, milestones, all that stuff. You might forget all that stuff in your partner's birthday. Imagine just those things that you're going to have to miss. You're going to feel really good about it, especially if you're really close to your family and friends. That's to achieve all-time greatness. But if you're not to achieve success, then of course you can sleep eight hours a day. But then the whole thing that really underpins it or kind of really does away with this whole idea is this really weird f- uh, fetishization of rich people not of being rich people being abnormal or being freaks right people that are rich are freaky um they have like weird things they do in order to get their money and i think that's where we get as a society or in general maybe it's that again i'm having done a podcast and trying to ascertain some real life lessons that can be gleaned from you know topical things happen to celebrities instead of just looking at them as like freaks of nature i think what i've seen in general is that there's a lack of um humanity or there's a lack of common sense reasoning or rationality being placed in some of the things that people say right also if you think people do or the way they conduct themselves like steve harvey's a great dude he's done a lot of great stuff he's got his own production company he's got a hit tv show he's you know he's kind of a staple in american culture great but i think he's starting to believe he's on hype right you're starting to believe that you are other you are different than other people you might be hard working, you might have a really good drive, you might have talent and tenacity, you might have all those things might have convoluted into the perfect timing of you meeting this person and it all lined up, cool. But you're not a freak, right? What you have done has been done before and will be done again in the future. It's something that can be repeated quite easily. His level, especially his level of success, right? It's not something that's really crazy abnormal. Um, so what he's saying is a bit weird because essentially he's trying to make it seem as if like he's got this special cheat code that's allowing him to do the success that he's done and i'm telling you right now if you try and sleep less than eight hours and you can't sleep less than eight hours you'll be in for a rude awakening not not a lot of people can do that right even go, going back to when you were in school there were some people that could cram remember that thing cram before an exam and there were some people like myself who couldn't if i cram i'd completely flop in the exam because i have too much information in my head and i didn't know where to start or begin what i had to do was plan ahead of time, one to two months, maybe even three months, and actually work diligently half an hour to an hour every single day, Monday to, no, sorry, Monday to Friday, and that's when I felt a bit more comfortable. But if I went into an exam with a couple of nights worth of cramming or an evening worth of cramming, I would die. It it didn't work for me. So we're different. Everyone's made up differently. So some people can operate on four or six hours of sleep. Some people can't. And some people just have to operate on that kind of level of sleep because the level of celebrity that he is, the amount of business that he must run, the amount of production companies he's set up, the amount of things he's involved in, he might have to wake up at those times just to kind of get business done, right? If he's saying you wake up at eight and it's 11 on the East Coast, he might have to just get up at six just for business sense so that he's up when those he's up when those guys are getting to the office that might just be one of those things it might not be a talent or like a special thing that he's currently been adorned or blessed with. it just might be the circumstances he's in but i also think in general we don't what we need to kind of say to people or people need to say to themselves or really question themselves is what gary v spoke about a lot it's not about what you do when you're sleeping it's not about how long you're sleeping it's about what you're doing when you're waking up or when you're awake right that's what you should be concentrating on so for everyone out there complaining about what they don't have, blah, 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 think about the times that you spend procrastinating, wasting time on social media, watching stuff on Netflix, watching a random YouTube video. Those are the hours of the day that you need to commit to all the things that you want to do in order to kind of better yourself. Or if you do want to become a one percenter, that's the things that you want to con- concentrate on. So one percent is what they probably are doing is limiting the amount of time they're sleeping to wake up before they go to work to get to work doing the things they want to do. So I'd imagine if you're a one percent to one percent, it probably isn't crazy to you to sleep for six hours five hours four hours get up in the morning 5 a.m go for a run because it, it, it makes you uh come alive or be awake maybe do some push-ups or sit-ups whatever it may be something they do in the morning to kind of get them ready and start going come back in shower and then from the hours of six to eight or six to nine before you get the, you head out to work you work on your craft that you want to do whether it's programming whether it's making a website whether it's building an app whether it's um getting your agency or your service up and running you spend those hours in the morning before you've even gone to work working on your stuff that you want to do outside of work at lunchtime you're probably doing it too on the way back home you're probably doing it too from 7 to 1 a.m you're probably doing that too that's what one percent is probably do right that's and again that's something that everyone can do fine but to live a successful life a life full of fulfillment something that you get you got you know to have to feel like you've got a, a reason for waking up 
reviewing trainers um, is a good example, right? You sleep eight hours a day, you wake up in the morning, get to work. You've got the whole day ahead of you. Get the work done in the morning, so then in the afternoon you have free to do whatever you want to do. But what will end up happening is that if you build good habits and you start reviewing your shoes early or start thinking about ideas, uh, thinking of shot ideas, thinking of where you're going to put it, what lighting, what the title you're going to use, what tags, you're thinking about the cover art, the thumbnail, sorry. You're thinking about all these things in the morning and you're jotting it down, you start filming, you film some stuff, sometimes it doesn't work out, you edit it, duh, 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 duh. by the time it comes to maybe 2 p.m. in the afternoon, then maybe when you start when doing your free time downtime, but what end up happening? But because you built such a good habit, after the two a.m. after when two a.m. does come around, you probably will just continue working because you're you're doing what you do something that you love. There won't be a need for an escape. There won't be a need for like to go somewhere else and unwind because you're unwinding doing something that is making you come alive. So that kind of success, you probably don't need that kind of level of wealth. You don't need to be you know. Um, sleeping four hours a day and waking up at the dusk of dawn to get on the stock market that's not how things go and then especially in this era to become rich or to become wealthy in some maybe even wealthy is a maybe wealth is more generational but to become rich you don't need to be waking up at the break of dawn to, uh, to see a stock market is open if you make a product that people want and you sell it online and you, you know you have the right marketing spend the right ads in the right places you could easily make that money from just from the comfort of your own bedroom you know, you can, you can probably make that money whilst you're asleep selling stuff online. Fulfilled by Amazon, stuff on eBay, Depop, whatever Facebook marketplace. You can make a lot of money doing that. You don't need to be awake at a crack of dawn to get into investments. Like, and not everyone understands being a stock market, but people do know products. They know what works. There might be something that you bought recently that you think is amazing that you've been eulogizing about your, to your friends too. Why not buy a few of them? Buy a few of them and sell them on to your friends. Sell them on to people in and around your area. Then when it starts blowing up, maybe buy a domain. Uh, get a big cartel shop, get a Shopify account, start selling on there. So yeah, I, I think it's a really weird thing to say as somebody, but again, I think it might just be because he's starting to, you know, he's starting to think his shit doesn't stink and stuff. You don't have to believe you're on a hype, but again, it's different. I guess if you want to be a, a one percenter, you want to be like Mark Zuckerberg, you want to be like Jeff Bezos, you want to be like Elon Musk, there is a portion of you that has to understand that you're going to have to sacrifice sleep. I think Elon Musk suffered from this, right? There's a lot of media backlash when he wasn't meeting it. He was at risk of not meeting the deadlines for the Model 3 and you're sleeping in his office or on his couch. Um, yeah, on the, in the, on the couch of his office to make sure things were running the way it needs to be run. People are like, oh, these promoting. Um, and then I think a lot of people at the factory too were also willing to do it because they saw the head guy doing it. Uh, they went to sacrifice um, their family life and sleep in the, office, in the factory too. They're saying, oh, he's promoting... Um, you know, this idea that you have to sleep at work or you have to kind of work all hours a day in order to kind of get far or whatever it may be. It's like, no, he's showing you that at that level or what they're doing at Tesla Motors, right? How they're trying to absolutely change an industry that is, you know, super resistant to change. I think Elon Musk mentioned in another interview with Joe Rogan that, you know, the auto industry was super resistant, super hesitant on passing the law for mandatory seatbelts in cars, right? Seatbelts in cars, not even airbags, seatbelts. Airbags, maybe they could have argued with, maybe saying, you know, you might end up suffocating yourself, you know, slapping your face on a, on a, on a pillow as you rear, rear in into a car. But seatbelts, they were hesitant on having in cars, seatbelts. And if you know anything about old school cars, you know most of them don't have seatbelts, right? You're sliding all along in, on the inside. And they somehow thought that would be a good idea. So he's trying to change the whole industry. So I think trying to change the entire industry, right? And then trying to change it to a renewable energy source in terms of electricity, electric cars, right? EVs, electric vehicles. And the way people look at that and the kind of poo-pooing nature that people have about those kind of things, they call it maybe pseudoscience. They, you know, so it will move for some people. It's maybe in the realm of global warming. To do that, you probably do need to sacrifice some levels of sleep. If you just want to, you know, be successful, be able to go on holiday four times a year, take your kids to see movies when they want, buy them the toys that they like, buy yourself a nice jacket when the other one rips. You don't need to be up at the crack of dawn. Um, so stock markets to get up, you, you know, again, it's not for everybody. Not everyone can do that. But you, what you, what you should be concentrating on is what you do when you're awake. What's, what's, the, how is your day work out? How are you breaking down the time? Are you spending too much time on frivolous activities? Are you not focusing on the things you need to focus on? That's how you get forward.